Hi, my name is Tigran Mikoyan. Today I would like to present the Smartix Neo, which is an aeroelastic wing demonstrator with a distributed and decentralized control. The presentation will cover the development of the demonstrator, modeling and simulation experiments performed. Additionally, a brief explanation of the manufacturing and integration is given. First, let's have a look at the background topic of this presentation, adaptive aerospace structures. Adaptive aerospace structures are integrated systems that can adapt their shape most optimally in response to external flight conditions, load redistribution and maneuvers. This can help reduce the weight or fuel consumption during the operation. However, the flexibility, flight conditions and load resistance of highly adaptive structures needs to be adequately accounted for, either passively or actively, to prevent failure due to turbulence or gust load encounters and other aeroelastic phenomena such as flutter. On the left, an example of an adaptive compliant trailing edge concept developed by Flexis and tested by NASA in flight. The ride is a distributed continuously morphing concept proposed by NASA, the VCTF concept. To advance this field, the SmartX project was initiated and the SmartX Alpha Wing demonstrator was developed, which you see here. With the SmartX Alpha, we achieved successful operation in several wind tunnel tests, demonstrating simultaneous gust and maneuver load deviation. However, the assessment revealed some of the shortcomings attributed to the complexity of the system and actuation speed, which impacted the possible scope of objectives. This invited the investigation into the benefits of a simple hinged but distributed flaps it was hypothesized that a faster actuation mechanism could help achieve more control objectives than the SmartX Alpha, as shown here. Hence, the SmartX Neo project was initiated. Let's have a look at the design behind the SmartX Neo and the autonomous glider platform. The SmartX Neo is a composite wing with carbon fiber skin and 3D printed structural components, reinforcing wing box structure. The servo mechanism is integrated to make the profile as smooth as possible. A hinge is facilitated by a Kevlar layer cured between the carbon fiber skin. Based on our experimental tests, we developed a distributed decentralized control architecture, allowing us to decouple and synchronize actuator and sensor components in hardware and software at various sampling rates. This conventional glider platform and architecture is envisioned for the wing. GPU processing and learning-based control is utilized together with sensor fusion strategy. Now we will go over the design methodology adopted for the development of the demonstrator. A coupled aeroservoelastic model was developed to assess the various actuator configurations. The structure is modeled as an Euler Bernoulli beam describing a second order mass spring damping system. The system states are nodal displacements, bending, torsion and flap rotation angle. The wing root shear force, moment, torsion and tip displacements are the outputs of interest. A two-dimensional strip theory is adopted to include the unsteady aerodynamic forces related to the right-hand side, based on the Leishman initial function approximation. The coupled model contains the structural nodal states and aer aerodynamic leg states. An illustration of the coordinate system and the definitions is given on the right. Finally, a uniform 1 minus cosine gust is imposed on the right wing half. An essential aspect of modeling the system was to develop a parametric actuator dynamics model. The flap system is augmented into the structural model by including flap mass and inertia parameters, as seen in the red highlighted boxes. The model's parametrization is achieved by proportionally scaling the mass and damping of the second order system, the mat matrices K beta and C beta. As per definition of a second order system, the scaling K for stiffness is therefore proportionally a squared factor with respect to damping. We can visualize the system via the simplified animation shown for nominal k equal to 1. When the scaling parameter is below 1, k below 1, the actuator becomes proportionally faster and more responsive, potentially allowing faster response to disturbance. The control method used for the system is optimal linear quadratic control, LQR. The task of the controller is to find the optimal feedback gain, K, to stabilize the aeroelastic system, described by vector X and output Y. The objectives of interest are root reaction forces and moments. These are shear force, bending moment, torsion and tip displacement. 
The state feedback law minimizes the quadratic cost function designed around the objectives, where the deviation from the reference and the actuator cost is penalized, given by matrices Q and R. And this Riccardi equation yields the solution to the optimal feedback. The closed-loop system can then be defined after the inclusion of the gain matrix, as shown here. A simplified control diagram looks as follows. Here, the reference input commands zero desired deviation from the reaction forces and moments in the presence of gust. Now, the more interesting part. Let's discuss the results of the simulations and the experiment. A simulation experiment was set up to test the hypothesis if faster actuation is beneficial for control objectives. In this table you see on the left side the scaling parameters explained previously in three different design configurations 1, 0 0.75 and 0.5. With lower scaling the actuator becomes faster. Effect of these was varied against simulation parameters describing the characteristics of the gust in three different frequencies 1 to 5 Hz. Now let's see the open loop and closed loop time responses. First the dotted red line shows that the open loop is significantly higher and matches the input gust onset. We can observe that lower scale, uh, scaling values seem to produce the best reduction in load for shear force bending moment and tip displacement. Looking at 5 Hz the peak is much sharper and amplitude slightly lower. The controller thus also needs to engage faster to counter the disturbance caused by a gust. Two metrics were established to assess the performance of all the simulations, open loop versus closed loop. The first one calculated the percentage difference between open loop and closed loop peaks, a clear indication of load reduction. Here we see an example for shear force peak magnitude. The second metric defines the percentage difference of area underneath the onset curves between open loop and closed loop, as shown here. This table summarizes all simulation results for varying scaling parameter and gust frequency, represented by rows and columns respectively. The percentage difference shown yields load reductions of up to 75% for closed loop in nominal actuator configuration. Looking at K is 0.5, the green box, we see that up to 84% reductions are achieved for faster actuator, yielding superior results over the nominal and improvements by 11%. This is shown in the last rows of the tables, which indicate the deltas, differences with respect to the nominal. This confirms the hypothesis that faster actuators are more effective at load reductions. Furthermore, we can observe that shear force yields a better reduction than tip deflections. The shear force operates at a faster time scale compared to tip deflections, since it's, it is directly related to linear acceleration. This confirms the second hypothesis, that the reduction is effective for higher frequency objectives. For the area metric, similar observations are made. Let us look at the nodal displacements along the span. In these 3D plots, the x-axis is the span and the y-axis is the time. Z are the nodal displacements in meters. The same observation is made that the lowest scaling has suppressed the deflections most effectively. We also see that the tip exhibits higher amplitude as expected. It is interesting to evaluate how flaps were allocated by looking at the flap distribution in 3D. Here again the x-axis is the span, the y-axis is time and the z-axis the flap angles. We clearly see that the lift increment is shifted inboard by allocating the flaps closer to the roots. We also see that the controller utilizes the higher bandwidth of the faster actuator more effectively, and for lower scaling, the amplitudes are higher. Thereby, it can achieve better load reduction. Let's look at the closed and open loop GLA more closely to understand the reasoning behind the control allocation. This is an additional analysis demonstrated on a simplified aircraft model at trimmed cruise condition. In this animation we see the open loop case without the controlled flap input. Assume that the vector lines along the span are local lift increments caused by a uniform gust encounter. This distribution causes an increase in loads, consequently increasing tip deflection and root reaction forces and moments. 
The controlled model, in contrast, actively allocates the flaps to minimize these forces and moments. The inherent strategy of the controller is to shift the lift increment inboard such that the loads are alleviated, as you see here. Here, additional aerodynamic analysis is performed to study the effect of control allocation. The control allocation is sampled at the onset peak of the allocated flap angle shown here in time domain. In this analysis, the 3D color maps projected on the aircraft wings are the pressure distributions for 1 and 5 Hz. We see that the low pressure region, light yellow color, is generated near the area where the flaps are deflated at an upward angle to counter the gust. At 5 Hz, higher total drag is generated, particularly behind the deflected flaps. When we look at the streamlines, the wake generated behind the wing in the upper figures, we can confirm that the wake is larger for 5 Hz. So, what are the conclusions? In conclusion, the study presented the development, modeling, control and analysis of a decentralized aeroelastic wing integrated into an autonomous glider platform. In the design, actuator dynamics were evaluated through scaling of stiffness and damping. With faster actuator, we achieved reductions of up to 84%, which is 11% improvements with respect to the nominal LQR. Faster actuator showed more effectiveness for faster control objectives. These observations confirmed our hypothesis presented earlier. Before we wrap up this presentation, let's have a look at the bonus slides covering the manufacturing and the integration process. Now let us go briefly over the several manufacturing steps involved. After the preparation and cutting of the composite layers, the layup is performed by hand. Here you see the cutting of the Kevlar hinge. The Kevlar is cured between the second and the third layers. The third layer is the innermost of in total three layers. The foam core was added for additional structural stability of the flap. Then a standard vacuum bagging process follows this. The assembly process was reasonably challenging due to numerous wing components and instrumentation involved during the integration. After the servo assembly, the 3D printed ribs were assembled. This is followed by a careful deployment of the sensory network and wiring present in the top and the bottom wing parts. Epoxy is applied as a binding agent with an additional reinforcing mixture in the leading and trailing edge for a better bond. After the curing process, the cutouts are made for the panels. Similarly for the flaps. And finally, the sensor integration. The strain gauges are placed both in the 90 degree orientation as a cross 45 degree to measure the strain. Pressure tabs are added for measuring the pressure distribution. These are high precision SLA print components with a tiny air channel and interface allowing a pressure tube to be attached. A flexible interface is added between the adjacent modules to reduce the penalty of control allocation and increase the smoothness along the span. This is composed of feather-like elastomer-infused composite skin sections, deforming with the flaps. So what is the outlook and the next steps in our research? In future, wind tunnel test is planned and further development of the autonomous glider platform. This will be followed by scaled flight testing. With this, I would like to conclude the presentation and thank you for your attention. 
If you have any questions, please be welcome to ask them in the Q&A session. Here are some links about our demonstrators if you're interested to know more.